Um, I'm looking forward to doing crew this year at my school and I've done cheer for the past few years. Awesome, Saskia, thank you for sharing. Um, we're so happy to have you. And Anusha? Hi, um, my name is Anusha Manoj and I am a ninth grader attending Issaquah High School. Uh, I did not immigrate from anywhere, but my dad came from Kerala, India when he was just 17 and my mom followed a few years later. Some of my hobbies include reading, writing short stories and playing the violin. And I also enjoy hiking and badminton. Thank you so much, Anusha. Uh, I really loved le learning more about you. Um, quickly, I'm gonna introduce myself as well. Um, hello everyone, my name is Anushka Saxena. Um, I'm a sophomore at Skyline High School. Um, I am also a second generation immigrant. Um, both of my parents immigrated from India. And a fun fact about me is that I love to study foreign languages and culture. So this is something that I really enjoy doing. All right, well, um, we're gonna get started with our questions. Um, just quickly, once again, um, actually, I think it would be good um, if we did a land acknowledgement. Um, so the indigenous, you know, Native um, American populations that lived in, on this land, um, it's very important to uh, recognize their contribution as well. So um, we recognize the indigenous, um, populations as the original stewards of this land and we would like to thank them for all of the um, work that they have done and we would like to thank them for taking care of this land and treating it um, with such kindness. So um, before starting, um, this is something that is important to acknowledge and we uh, really cannot have done anything on this land without them being here. So thank you um, for taking care of this land. All right, so now I'm going to jump right into our questions. Um, we're gonna be having a fun discussion about how we can all be a little more welcoming. So our first question is, why do you believe is the importance of diversity and equity um, and inclusion in our community? So Saskia, you can start. Yeah, um, I, I believe that it's important because then everyone can feel welcome and not seen as different, but as unique in a society where diversity is needed. And that way we can include all ideas and opinions. And in very many cases, different opinions can spark great ideas that can lead to creating opportunities for future immigrants and to help educate others. Yeah, I agree. Um, it's definitely important to have diversity in our community so you can allow for new and unique ideas from different um, viewpoints. So thank you for sharing. Um, Anusha? Yeah, I agree with everything Saskia said. Um, I believe that is it, it's important to have diversity in a community and in a country because um, uh, people who came from another country are used to different ideas and different settings and backgrounds. And if they come over here, they can introduce us to new ideas and make this country and possibly the world a better place. Absolutely. Um, immigrants definitely bring a very unique perspective with them that can really be uh, beneficial for our community. So I agree with what you said. Um, is there anything you guys would like to add about, you know, your personal experiences or thoughts about how we can all be more welcoming of immigrants? Let's start with Anusha this time. Yeah, um, so I think um, coming over to a new country is very scary for a lot of people because again, they're used to different things and um, you're used to different ideas and different settings and backgrounds. So when you're coming to a new country, it's completely different and you don't really have that great, that great amount of information to, um, you know, help support yourself while you're there. So I think it's really important to just, you know, have a friend to help you around, um, give you information, and just be there whenever you need them to be. And I also think that 
any information about the new country, including like housing and prices and even like the nearest grocery store is incredibly important for an immigrant coming here. No, definitely. Um, I really love what you said about, you know, um, housing and prices. That is definitely something that is a challenge for immigrants. Um, it's hard to know all of the information when you come here. So that's definitely a struggle that immigrants go through. And I'm glad that you addressed that. Um, Saskia, you want to add to that? Um, yeah, I just think that all of us have to be more willing to open up and to listen to others and learning and educating ourselves about other religions, cultures, traditions, and being able to let people of different backgrounds pitch in their ideas so that we can become better versions of ourselves. So, I mean, I guess personally, I was pretty lucky to have been able to move here when I was three years old. So the language barrier wasn't much of a barrier for me because I learned it from a really small age. And I just can't imagine what it must have been like for somebody who moved in like middle school or high school learning English as like a second language, but really as a second language, not knowing anything. And as you can tell, I mean, all of us are pretty insecure about ourselves. So it's a little bit hard to let other people like just feel welcome when we want ourselves also to fit in. So I think it's really important if we all just understand that all of us are coming from different backgrounds, different stories, and to let, just be friendly to them, as Anusha said. And so, yeah, that's a big. Mm -hmm. That is so beautifully said. Um, the fact that, you know, we, we all are different in our own ways, but, you know, we all are also struggling internally to try to fit in. So it's not just the immigrants, it's all of us. So we should just always be inclusive of everyone, no matter their backgrounds or race or ethnicity. I agree. Uh, do you guys have any thoughts on how people can be more welcoming of immigrants? Um, what should people do to be more welcoming and inclusive of people? Anyone can start. I can go. Um, so I used to go to Isco Middle School and what we did was we created the Latino Club and we were able to have all like the Latinos and not even just Latinos, it was anybody could come and we learned about like our culture, like we learned about like food and everything. And sadly, we didn't have very many meetings due to COVID, but it was just really fun because like you felt like you fit in and it was, yeah, I can tell that it made an impact on a lot of people. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Um, I'm really, I think it's really cool that you started your own like Latino club. Um, that sounds Awesome, and I think um, having such clubs in multiple um, facilities, like not just at school, but having like community centers or having places where um, different cultures are respected and a safe place where people from a certain culture can go, that I think would be really beneficial for community. And Anusha? Yeah, I agree with what Saskia said. Um, I think, uh, uh, starting a club is actually a really great move because um, especially for immigrants, um, finding people who are just like you will make you feel more comfortable and um, it'll make you feel more included as well. And you'll have a place to go when you don't feel, I don't know, when you don't feel included or beneficial to the community. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, kind of stemming off of that, um, we should, you know, be encouraging our immigrants and people of different color uh, to, you know, feel more empowered. Um, definitely in a situation where they are the minority, they can feel suppressed. So bringing them up is very important. Um, I agree with what you said. Um, do you guys have any other thoughts on how we can be inclusive? Um, or I guess I can rephrase that. What does the term, you know, inclusivity mean to you? I can go. Um, I think that a lot of us, yeah, of course, like I said earlier, that all of us just want to fit in. We want to be able to feel like we're a part of something. And so, yeah, obviously, like learning about other people's cultures, like that helps a lot because you know where they're coming from. You know, like, like, why why they don't understand English as well or like just having being able there being able to be there just to help them 
And like, sometimes even like when somebody joins a sport, you're like part of a team. And that feeling is definitely like, everybody needs to feel that because it's just, it's such a special feeling. Mm -hmm. And I think that if we can all just learn to accept everyone for who they are and be able to befriend them and be able to like, you know, be to say like, hey, I'm here for you. You can totally talk to me, whatever you need. Um, they'll just, it'll just make everyone feel a lot better. Yeah, totally. Um, like reaching out is so important. Um, cause like having somebody, like having the feeling that somebody is there for you and that you can actually talk to someone is like such a big deal. Um, when you come to like a new place and you don't know anyone. So yeah, I, I really like that point. And Anusha? Yeah. Um, when you're part of a team, uh, each person has a role to play, and that's that's um, that's different from fitting in. It's just it's acknowledging our diversity and our differences, and that makes us stronger as a whole. So inclusivity is just um, knowing that other people are diverse and different and have different skills than you, and that'll make your team way better than ever before. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, it's, it's a team effort. Everyone's has their own role to play. I agree. And I guess our next question is, how have your own experiences as immigrants or second generation immigrants, um, how has that shaped your life? And how have you had to adapt? Anusha, you can start. Um, I was very lucky to, I haven't had to adapt because I was, I lived here my whole life. I have lived around the same people for many years. And luckily for me, they're all part of the same culture as I am. So um, we all get to celebrate our similarities, our cultures and traditions. And I have never had to worry about any challenges that I face, that other people face way more than me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I actually have a similar experience. Um, I'm also a second gen generation immigrant like you. So I think we are pretty lucky in a sense that you you don't feel as um, excluded um, because you've like been born and raised here. So you have been gotten time to adjust, but it's I can only imagine how hard it must be for people who come from outside and how much they must have to adapt. So I think, Saskia, you can definitely give some input on that because you immigrated. So would you like to share? I mean, yeah, I, although I was three years old, I guess, I mean, I feel like we can share experiences on a few things. Like, I mean, moving here, I was bilingual, so I could speak Dutch and Spanish. But then here, like nobody else would speak Dutch or Spanish to me except for my parents. So it was a little bit hard to keep that up. And as I started to speak English more and more fluently, I started to lose my ability to speak Dutch and Mexican as fluently. And I think that that was a really big thing for me. And I mean, I guess like one example that doesn't necessarily relate, but like I remember going to school and obviously like my mom would send me like Mexican food and all my friends like had like, you know, Lunchables and everything. So it was kind of hard to like, like I always wanted to get Lunchables, but it was, it was just a little, it wasn't difficult, but I didn't feel like I fit in. Mm -hmm. So I think that was one big thing, but now I'm like, so like, I just like, I love Mexican food. I'm always so accepting of having it and it's just, it's completely changed. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, wait, your camera is frozen. Um, Anusha, is it the same for you? No? Oh, okay. It got fixed for me um, now. But yeah, um, that's a really interesting experience. Thank you for sharing. Um, yeah, so um, is there anything else that you guys would like to share? I know um, like sometimes it puts you in a unique situation having to handle two different cultures. So what are some experiences that you've had with, you know, other people and how did they react to you? You can start, Tuskia. Okay, I'll go again. Um, I think because I'm like mixed, I don't look like, you know, I don't look Mexican enough, but then at the same time, I don't like Dutch enough. So when somebody asks me like, oh, where are you from? I'd say like, I'll say either Dutch or Mexican. They're like, whoa, like they sound like really, really surprised. 
So, I mean, I guess in some ways it's honestly really cool to have two different parents from two completely different backgrounds. But yeah, it's like also it's interesting to see like how I, at the same time I don't look at all like either, like maybe a little, but I don't look like one or the other. Yeah, that is true. Um, you're in a very unique situation. Uh, Anusha, you want to share? Um, I have never had any unique situations like that because both of my parents are from Kerala, India, and um, I mostly have Indian friends and people, my friends who aren't Indian are uh, very inclusive and they don't, you know, say they don't, they're not surprised about where I'm from when I tell them because they, they've known me for a long time and I, I've never had any unique situations like that. Yeah, um, I think it's also like due to the fact that we're second generation immigrants. So that does create a different um, situation. Um, I think I wasn't able to fully mention this before, but um, one of our panelists who was supposed to be here today, Kamulia, um, unfortunately she wasn't able to join due to a family emergency. So our thoughts and prayers are with her family and we are you know, really wishing her the best. Um, so I thought I just mentioned that. But um, yeah, so I think uh, in terms of uh, being a second generation immigrant, you uh, have to balance two cultures, but you still feel a little bit more like you um, are fit in. But, you know, with as as in Saskia's case, um, even though she moved when she was a little younger, um, it can be a challenge sometimes to learn the new language, to adapt to the new culture. So um, it's nice to hear you guys' experiences. Um, are there any challenges that you guys have had to face due to being a, an immigrant? Anyone can start. I'll go, but I don't, I don't think anything really specific, to be honest, which so, um, am I frozen? No, I can hear you. Oh, okay. I don't think there's any specific challenges, to be honest. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's like, I guess I'll do instead of challenges with something really cool is that I have been able to learn about the history of the Netherlands. And then at the same time, I've been able to learn about the history of Mexico. And at the same time, I've been able to learn about the history of America. And I just think it's really cool that I'm able to bridge everything together and know about all of the places that I'm a part of. And yeah, I think, although that's the opposite of a challenge, um, I think that that was just really cool. No, yeah, that's great to hear. Um, it doesn't have to be a challenge. Uh, it's, I think it's cool that you are able to connect with so many cultures. That's a great thing. Um, so good. Anusha? Um, yeah, just like Saskia, I can't really think of anything specific. But I have heard stories about people who have had to deal with much, much worse. Um, I, uh, my, one of my mom's friend's friend, um, she and her daughters were, um, and her daughter's friend was um, listening to Indian music and they were social distancing and they were uh, dancing to that music and there were two there were these two boys who kept calling them swear words for listening to their own music for um dancing to that music and um that just gives me an entirely new perspective because i i i mean i've heard about things like these but it happened so far away that i just didn't really think too much about it but this this happened at a park really nearby and that just occurs to me right now because I realize that there are people like this in a close proximity to me that um, exclude people based on what they listen to, uh, what, what they dance to, and that's just, that's not right. Yeah, no, that's just um, really saddening to hear. I know there are a lot of stories like that uh, on the news and everything, but yeah, that's just very saddening and it's absolutely not okay. Um, you know, d you know, making fun of somebody else's culture and um, disrespecting them is 
something that's a big issue in America, um, especially because America is such a melting pot of cultures. We have so many different people like immigrants here living here. So our country just really faces like a lot of unique challenges that other countries don't. So yeah, that's definitely a big issue. But thank you for sharing that. Um, also, in, in light of the Black Lives Movement, um, recently it has started to gain a lot of momentum and it's really started to get the breakthrough that the movement deserves. So what do you believe is the role of society in helping to support this movement? Anusha, do you have thoughts on that? Um, I think that uh, African Americans, they have suffered a lot throughout our history. So I think all we can do, we can never really understand what they're going through because none of us have really been through things like this. Um, all we can do is just step aside, support them however we can. But when it comes to, I don't know, the emotions that we're feeling, we, we don't have any empathy for them because we have no idea what they're going through but we do we can have sympathy we can try to understand what they're going through but we really never can and we should also spread awareness about why the black lives uh, movement is incredibly important especially now and um yeah we we're all a team in this but some of us just have different roles mm -hmm. yeah and especially if you know you haven't if you're not African American, you haven't been in that situation. So you you just, you can't know um, what they've been through. So as um, people who are not African Americans, we are their allies, we should stand with them. Um, there was a quote that said that, you know, we, we can't, you know, we don't know what you're going through, but we will stand here with you, we will join hands with you, and we will support you. Um, that's what we can do. And educating ourselves and spreading awareness these are all really important things. Um, and it is our role to, to do these things as well. Saskia, you want to add? Yeah. Um, yeah. Also, like what Anusha said, we need to be able to understand without comparing because these are two completely different situations and it's just not fair to anyone if we're comparing these things. We need to get as much support for this movement as we can. Like, although not everyone will, it's better. It's like more people is better than nothing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the more and more people that support this movement will, the more powerful the message is. And um, lastly, like, you know, we need to do exactly what we are asked of, such as signing petitions, going to peaceful protests, educating ourselves. And, like to add on, I think even though Kumwilia is in here today, she said something that really like stuck with me. She said that somebody who couldn't go to the protest, who couldn't do these things, like she had asked Kumwilia, like, what can I do? And Kumwilia, she said like, you know, if you can't do anything, just educate yourself. And I think that everyone's really trying to make that more accessible like nowadays. Like, for example, in Netflix, they started creating like a huge, like a tab just for, black empowerment movies and they're really really like it just helps educate you because like what's better than a movie to learn about stuff and so I think that I was that's really important mm -hmm. yeah um and I I really like what you talked about um what Kanulia said because I think that was a really interesting point that um you have the power to make a change when you you know educate yourself and when you spread the word you can actually make a difference through that and another thing that I think she mentioned was um, since she was an immigrant from, Ni her parents were an Im immigrants from Nigeria, um, I think when she was mentioning that, you know, it was definitely a whole process for her trying to, you know, figure out, you know, how she fits in and because she was um, an African American in, you know, America trying to figure out her place in society, that was um, a very unique situation for her. So I think we all are trying to find our identities um, you know, even if you're an immigrant or not, it's difficult um, to find your place in, you know, this community. So we can all try to like be more inclusive of each other. That would definitely make things better. Um, also, uh, even though she isn't here, she has a really wonderful podcast that you guys should listen to. It's called Sisters Spoke and Woke. 
Um, it's by Kanwulia and her sister. So you guys should go check that out. Um, they really educate as well about the issues that African Americans face in our society today. So definitely a shout out to her podcast. Um, is there anything that you guys would like to add about how people can um, be more welcoming of African Americans or just minorities in general? I mean, a big thing is educating yourself, you know, because if you don't know, like, what, yeah, what, like, the Black Lives Matter movement is about, then how are you going to be able to support it in the right way? So I feel like, yeah, if you educate yourself and you need to know that it isn't in any way to make it seem like African Americans are better, like, that's, I feel like that that's such a big misconception about what people are trying to say. It's like, all they want is equality. And that's like just the main thing about it. So if more people will educate themselves and they'll understand why this is such a big movement. Right, and it's not that exactly, I like what you said, like they're not trying to prove themselves better. They're just trying to like get their place in society. Like they wanna be treated equally as they should and as they deserve. Um, Anusha, do you have any thoughts on this? Yeah, just like what Saskia said, um, I think, I think I'm not really sure, but people who aren't supporters of the Black Lives Movement, um, I think that's what they think. I think that um, they believe that uh, African Americans are trying to make themselves look better, but they're not. And they've suffered through so much. They just want equality and that's it. And the, um, you can educate yourself and let yourself know that what the purpose of this movement is and why they are doing it. And um, that will, that's all you can really do during these times, but you should also just stand by them and you shouldn't pretend to empathize with them um, because you don't know. Yeah, um, there are definitely uh, people out there who are not supporting it, but I think they are definitely under the misconception of what the movement is behind. So again, going back to that, educating yourself about the movement is the way to go. So you know what it's all about. Um, so Saskia, I think you also mentioned that you, um, about like a day of the dead celebration. So can you elaborate on that? Yeah, I mean, this kind of ties into the fifth question. Do you want me to answer it like that? Yeah, sure. Okay, so the question is, what do you appreciate about Issaquah that, and what is unique about our city that we call home? So I just said like, you know, the fact that the whole community has been so open to learning about different cultures and creating events to make immigrants and second generation immigrants from all backgrounds feel welcome and included and not like clueless. Like, I mean, also like an, another example really quickly is that like the school system, like, I'm pretty sure that they're doing more than others, like, you know, translating documents and having like people there to help and being able to support that. And then, okay, going back to Day of the Dead is um, my mom. So a few years back, she and her friends started doing a Day of the Dead ce celebration in Blakely Hall, which is in the Highlands. And it wasn't very much in the center, but a, a lot of, like, a few people came, and it was, not a few, there was a lot of people that came, and it was just, like, so much fun, because, you know, everybody got to learn about the Mexican culture and what we do on Day of the Dead. And so last year, my mom had the opportunity to make the Day of the, the, Day of the Dead Festival in the Senior Center by the, I think it's called the Memorial Park, and the train station little office building inside. And it was just like so much fun because a lot of more people came. It was so packed. And I remember like people telling me like, oh my gosh, that was so much fun. Like, I hope we could do it again this year. Sadly, we can't because of the COVID, but we are definitely looking forward to doing it again soon. That's awesome. That sounds really fun. Um, I would love to attend. I love the Day of the Dead Festival. Um, 
Yeah, that's really cool that you were able to um, host that cultural event. I think the city of Issaquah was unique is that they really do a good job of um, being inclusive of all cultures and hosting events just like this one. It's a great example. Um, hosting events like these to uh, recognize the diversity that we have in our city. So um, yeah, I'm just going to like ask the question again in case you guys didn't hear, but it's like, what do you appreciate and, um, you know, what do you appreciate about our city of Issaquah and what's so unique about the city that we call home? So, Anusha? Um, yeah, I just, I appreciate how friendly the people are and uh, they're really kind and they, they do everything they can to help you and um, this place is full of opportunities and we have like so many youth organizations and we're close to a lot of big companies and we have tons of small businesses downtown. Um, but last and not least, I appreciate its greenery a lot and I enjoy how homely it is and it's really pretty and there are a lot of hikes and recreation parks and stuff to do so yeah. Yeah, definitely. There's there's a reason why our state is called the Evergreen State. <laughs> so yeah, we have a really beautiful um, city for sure. Saskia, Anusha, you guys have anything else you want to add? I mean, not necessarily, but yeah, I definitely agree with what Anusha says. Like, um, I was able to participate this summer and last summer because like growing up I went to the parks and rec camps and that was like such a big part of my life like I remember every summer I would look forward to it and I remember one main part of what made it so fun fun were the counselors and the CITs which are counselors in training and for the past two years because I was of age I was able to become a counselor in training and I think that just like overall the fact that Isako was able to provide me that experience which is going to help me with so many more things. And hopefully I can become a counselor someday. But this like just helped me so much, like learning about leadership, responsibility. I think it was just so amazing that I was given the opportunity. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, that sounds uh, super fun. And uh, hopefully you can become a counselor. Um, yeah, uh, I, I would like to share one of my experiences as well. Um, I was born in Iowa, actually. Um, so uh, in my school, I was the only Indian kid. Um, and you know, um, people were nice to me, but uh, sometimes uh, I did get fun of, made fun of because of my food. Um, it did, you know, make me feel a little upset, but I took it into my stride and, you know, I stood up for myself. But over time, you know, it started to get a little bit more noticeable and it really started to, you know, make me feel bad about myself. Uh, but then I moved here to Seattle about three years ago and I felt like I was near so many people just like me and I felt so much more included. And I realized that, you know, it wasn't just the people, it was also like my own fear of not fitting in. So a lesson I learned here is that, you know, you don't have to fit in to be happy necessarily. You just have to, you know, uh, celebrate your culture. You have to be proud of your culture and you shouldn't be worried about what other people are thinking or judging about you. Um, like Kanwulia said, you know, it, her dad, her, Kanwulia's dad told her that, um, her Nigerian, um, heritage is a gift. It's not a, setback it's a gift so that's something i really um agree with and i think that as immigrants or second generation immigrants we need to keep that in mind as well and yeah um I, if you guys don't have anything to else to add ann or megan do you guys want to jump in and add anything Oh, there we go. Yeah, I, I just want to say thank you for, um, thank you as the host and the uh, entire youth panel for this really thought provoking discussion. I think all of us have learned and uh, love, have a lot to take away 
from the hour that you've given us. And I hope that you will continue to amplify your voice and uh, start discussions and conversations in other places because it's so important to keep this up. And, and like you said, educate the public and educate everyone around you. Um, uh, your thoughts on Black Lives Matter, on, uh, ed on equity, diversity, and inclusion were invaluable. And I think they're gems that, um, that shouldn't be overlooked. So uh, thank you so much. Appreciate that. And it, it's beautifully articulated by all of you. So um, that's all I have to say. And, uh, and I hope that we will have you again for more discussions. If any, I don't know if you want to open it up to people for questions. It's up to you, Anushka. But, um, but my, I'm very grateful for all, all three of you in sharing your perspectives. Yeah, thank you so much, Anne. Um, we really appreciate your help as well. And I, I think uh, I just want to take this moment to say that we as a youth are also so honored that, you know, the city of Issaquah um, considered amplifying the youth uh, voices. We are really thankful that you guys gave us this opportunity and we all are genuinely really happy to be here. Um, we, I think we all would agree that we would love to do more events like this. Um, having discussions, I think, is also a great way to, you know, open topics up, uh, d educate people, think about things. So, you know, um, amplifying youth voice, I think, is something that we all um, would enjoy a lot. So thank you for um, supporting us and giving this opportunity to us. And thanks to the audience for joining us today. I think uh, we can all agree the collaboration, in collaboration we all win and that um, better products come out of it and, uh, and the youth will, the teens will continue to lead the way. So um, thanks Anushka, Saskia and uh, Anusha for, for your time and for your excellent thoughts. <laughs> Awesome. Um, so I guess, yeah, we are going to open up to the audience. Do you guys have any questions for us? Um, you guys can unmute yourself and ask or type it in the chat as well. Uh, uh, I'm I'm Vasanta. Uh, I'm a parent of a middle schooler. Uh, it's really awesome to see the youth board uh, come out with you know such important topics that are like currently uh, you know that we all um, resonate with, and um, it, it it is really you know uh, what do you say uh, encouraging to see that you know the youth are thinking in a in a, a, a with a growth mindset in a positive and increasing uh, um, direction. Um, I had one question. Uh, I have a daughter of my own and uh, was wanting to see, you know, when uh, does the opportunities to join the youth board open up? Uh, first of all, yeah, thank you for um, sharing your thoughts. Um, are you asking specifically about the Issaquah Youth Advisory Board? Uh, yes. Okay, uh, so I'm actually pretty new. <laughs> this is my first year in the Issaquah Youth Advisory Board. Um, but I think for this year, we just got in our new recruits. So I'm pretty sure that the um, uh, spots will open up next year. Um, Ryan, if you're there, um, Ryan is actually a um, counselor or part, like one of the leader on the leadership team for IAB. So he can probably answer your question better. Thank you, thank you Hi. so much. Yeah, so my name is Ryan. Um, I'm currently our community service chair on the board. Um, I've been on it for the past six years and just absolutely loved it. Um, our application process usually starts around probably April, May-ish is when we usually um, want applications to be sent in and then we usually begin the interview process um, in early June and make our decisions by the end of the month. So. Um, that's sort of when the application cycle starts for the following school year. Um, yeah, um, I can answer any other Ryan, questions. Is there, a, um, is there a way that I can subscribe and you know stay in tune with the uh, news from the youth board uh, so that you know I can have the dates on my calendar? 
Um, there isn't one that I know of. Um, you can reach out to Kathy Jones. She is the person who works. Um, she works for the City of Issaquah um, Parks and Recreation Department. She's sort of our adult liaison. She's the one who sort of heads the youth advisory board. So um, we don't necessarily have any way that we disseminate information ourselves. Um, you, we put stuff out through school e-news and um, in the recreation guides that come out quarterly. But um, if you are wanting more information, um, if you look up Kathy Jones's information on the City of Issaquah website in their like staff directory um, and reach out to her, she can probably get more information if you want it. Thanks, Ryan. That that kind of gives me the information that I need to go about. And and you know, I'm I wish you all all very best and looking forward to many more such events. That's awesome. Thank you so much. And thank you, Ryan, for answering yeah. your questions. <laughs> of course, you're welcome. Awesome. Are there any other questions? Um, you guys can just ask general thought-provoking questions as well. Um, we just have a couple of minutes as well. Like five more minutes, yeah. Well, if not, um, I it's not too late. You can still email us after the presentation. Um, I'll leave, I think uh, uh, Anush, Anushka, I don't know if you want to leave Kathy's email or um, I can leave my email for KCLS and you can ask us uh, questions that way. And I just want to shout out, uh, do a shout out to Marisol and Monica and Lindsay in the room who are also part of the collaboration and partner. So um, thank you very much for being an integral part of making this happen. So, all right. Oh, so did someone ask a question? Yeah. Yeah, and great work. Great work, um, Anushka. <laughs> all right, everybody. And, and thank you, Saskia and Anusha. So if that's, if that's all, um, we're just gonna go ahead and end early. Um, thanks again for a